Hello everyone, and welcome back to Conspiracy. This week we'll be going to a small island known around the world as Ingerland and talking about an odd disappearance. Thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like if you liked the video, and let's get into it. Nothing like being subscribed to Conspiracy on YouTube. Nothing like it. Damien Nettles was born June 21st, 1980, to Valerie and Edward Nettles. He had an older sister named Sarah, and eventually a younger sister and brother named Melissa and James, respectively. At the age of 16, he was already 6 foot 4, so someone should have got this man a basketball. He loved his Doc Martens, and also was a huge fan of the grunge band Nirvana. Nirvana? I love Smells Like Teen Spirit. <laughs> more like Smells Like the only Nirvana song you know. Hello darkness, my old friend. Sadly, for the Nettles family, on November 2nd, 1996, their world would change forever. On November 2nd, 1996, at the age of 16, Damien Nettles was seen for the last time. He was wearing blue jeans and a black jacket, and it was believed that he didn't take a bag or anything with him of any personal belongings. Damien was dropped off by his dad at a party that he had planned on attending in the town of Cows with his friend Chris. The night started with Damien and Chris attending the party, and after a good while they went to buy some cider. Damien was seen leaving the party with a black camera, which has also never been found. He then went from East Cows to West Cows via a ferry with Chris. Once there, he entered Yorkie's, a fish and chip shop, but left without ordering anything. They tried to enter a few pubs, but as they were under 18 at the time, were unsuccessful. Because it seemed like the night was over, the two friends parted ways, with Chris going home and Damien heading back to Yorkie's. He bought some fish and chips and was later seen staggering around in a stupor. A witness recalls that he saw Damien attempting to open a door on a blue Ford Fiesta. The witness said that it was around 11.15 at night, and claims that it took place in the Harbor Lights pub parking lot. After this, another witness places Damien at a bus stop near one of the cooperative group's supermarkets. He got on the bus there, but talked to the bus driver and then exited shortly after. It was said that he had tried to take the bus driver's picture with the camera that he had on him. He then thanked the driver and exited the bus. A third witness was waiting in their car for their child to be dropped off by a different bus. While waiting, they claimed that a person matching Damien's description was eating chips huddled in an almost seated fetal position. The witness said that the person approached him and said, They are watching us before walking off towards the high street. This witness was the last confirmed person to see Damien Nettles. Numerous people who witnessed him on the night of his disappearance alleged that he looked as though he could have been heavily drunk and seemed to be possibly confused. Another allegation was made that a drug dealer by the name of Bunny Isles had sold drugs to Damien. An ex-girlfriend of his, Abby Scott, said that she believed there was aspects of his life that he was keeping a secret, and went on to say that it could have involved drugs, but she wasn't 100% sure. It wasn't possible to completely verify all witness statements from the night he disappeared, as some of the CCTV footage from the high street that could have had him was claimed to have been lost by the police. As of 2011, eight arrests for conspiracy to murder have been made by the Hampshire police. All eight people were released, and nobody has been charged. On November 1st, 2011, two arrests were made in Cowes on suspicion of conspiring to murder after the police received an anonymous tip. Due to UK laws, we don't know the names of these people, but we do know that the two arrested were a 44-year-old man and a 35-year-old woman. They were both questioned while in custody and linked to an address which was searched by police in hopes of finding Damien or any other evidence related to the case. Prior to this, in May of 2011, five arrests have been made on suspicion of murder. These include a 48-year-old male, a 45-year-old individual, a 50-year-old individual, a 37-year-old individual, and a 40-year-old individual. All were released on bail. A sixth arrest was also made in July of 2011. A 38-year-old man from East Cows, he was also released. As of October 4th, 2013, a £20,000 reward was offered from Hampshire for six months. 
Despite receiving 30 tips during this period, the authorities are still no closer to solving the mystery of Damien Nettles' whereabouts today as they were in 1996, the day he disappeared. On July 25th, 2016, a BBC3 series, Unsolved, The Boy Who Disappeared, was aired about the case. His family became aware that their son may have been captured on CCTV while on the high street, so they sought out the owners of the cameras, which belonged to a local organization. After the authorities were notified, they pointed Damien out in the footage to his family, but his mother said that it was not him. She did, however, locate her son in the footage, which showed Damien's last movements. He could be seen alone, eating chips, and walking along the empty streets just after midnight. This was the last moment anyone would see Damien Nettles. After some time, the footage was lost by police. Amazing work, fellas. Amazing. A complaint was made by Damien's mother to the Independent Police Complaints Commission in 2005 regarding the loss of the footage and the way her son's case had been dealt with. The response she got was that the incident had already been acted upon and punishment given. The case was extremely mishandled by the police. Evidence was misplaced. Very few records were kept. The call log made to police on the night of his disappearance no longer existed, and the records showing which officers were on duty that night were lost. All of this accumulates in any possible progression of the case being extremely hard and hindered. However, the case remains open. Other criticisms toward the handling of the investigation include requests made to commence searches both on land and from air being rejected, and the error made by police who initially listed Damien as a missing adult instead of a missing child. Members of the public campaigned by protesting and participating in a march to convince the police to dig at Parkhurd Forest and Gurnard, as claims were made that Damien's remains may be buried there. The police, however, declined the request, as they believed the claims had come from untrustworthy sources. Now, maybe it is I who is crazy, but if you have multiple sources saying that they heard something, maybe you should check it out anyway, just in case. Theories later circulated that Damien had fallen into the sea following his night out, but his mother dismissed these. She is convinced that he suffered at the hands of a drug gang. She says that despite the upscale reputation of the town, there are a number of people who are associated with supplying others with drugs. In March of 2002, Hampshire Police's major crime department was passed to the case, and details of the investigation were then entered into the national database. It was at this point that an informant who in the 1990s was connected to a local drug dealer, alleged he told the police what happened to Damien. In 2010, the informant approached Damien's mother as he felt no action had been taken regarding his claims. She was told by the informant that the local drug dealer was angered by Damien while they were arguing about drugs, which resulted in the dealer punching him and unintentionally killing him. The informant claimed Damien's body was concealed for three weeks in a drug den, then later buried in the town. The police investigated, arranged some searches, and made some arrests after Damien's mother took the info to them, but they concluded that the informant couldn't be trusted. This is another case where the police have decided not to do something because they think that the person giving them the information is not to be trusted, and again, maybe I'm crazy, but I would... I would think you would want to follow every lead possible to try to find a missing person. Various other rumors have come and gone over the years, but the one involving the drug dealer is the one that has persisted. The drug dealer died in 2002 of a heroin overdose, and it was then that rumors surfaced that suggested that he was involved. It was also said that he made a deathbed confession saying that he was involved in Damien's disappearance. In spite of the many investigations conducted, Plenty of campaigning, documentaries, a bibliography written by his sister seeking a resolution. Damien Nettles' whereabouts still remain a mystery to this day. What do you think happened to Damien Nettles? I personally think that the drugs dealer story is the most likely thing to have happened. Uh, his girlfriend thought that he was dabbling in drugs beforehand, and his mom seems to think it was drugs. And an informant came forward saying that he was there when a drug dealer accidentally killed him. So I do think that that's the most likely scenario. And I wish the police would dig where 
the informant said, but you can't always get what you want, I guess. Anyway, what do you think happened to Damien Nettles? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today. Remember to leave a like if you like the video, leave a dislike if you dislike the video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so, so much, and I'll catch you in the next one.